Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kupa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is risk assessment for a process change for an API manufacturing process change. This is part one. Today's topic details about a process change in API manufacturing. This video takes through variety of risk elements that must be addressed to achieve an effective risk assessment report for mitigation. The listed elements are only few typical elements. Many other elements depending upon the process may be addressed. In this video part 1, it is limited to process related changes only. In coming up parts of videos, we will learn on the other types of changes. Manufacturing process change. Basically, process change involves in the following change in processing steps changes from the approved process steps changes in input quantities it may be minor or major changes in input materials the chemistry change changes in chemistry is a major change this change needs a detailed risk assessment for establishing the risks and mitigation changes in vendor if the vendor produces the input materials with the same route of synthesis including the solvents and reagents usage at various stages of process the change is considered as minor otherwise it will be considered as a major change even if one solvent is changed changes in specifications and test methods if there is no process change and only test methods and specifications are revised, it may be considered as minor if the revised process material can be evaluated successfully with the validated method. Changes in critical equipment is considered as a major change. Changes in manufacturing location is also considered as a major change. Let us see how the risk assessment is done and the mitigation plans are done. List out each and every activity of the proposed change process steps. In risk assessment, the first step would be to list out each step carefully. Do not jump into conclusion that the step is very minor and need not be included. The decision of minor should be made only after evaluation. Discuss the potential risk in each step, output and the safety of the product. The probable risk to process, product, operation should be discussed in detail here. Severity, probability, detectability, the SPD ranking should be done here. Rank the risk qualitatively as low, moderate, or high. Based on the SPD rating, decide each step as per this classification. This is a qualitative ranking. This is the prescription for FMEA tool. Rank the risk quantitatively with a score on 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 scale. For FME CA tool, severity, probability, and detectability are rated with the score. Please note that ranking for detectability is in reverse order of scoring. That means for high detectability, the ranking is low, whereas for high severity and high probability, the ranking is high. Mitigate with a procedure or with a revised system depending upon the seriousness and probability of risk. 
By this exercise, you will know the classification of risk. If the risk is low or with a low score, mitigation plan may be to have precautions and training on understanding of the operation. If the risk is rated as moderate, existing procedure, that is the SOP, may be revised to achieve the mitigation goal. If it is rated as high, a detailed system may be proposed for mitigation. In FME CA type of evaluation, you can have score for low, moderate, and high classification based on the multiplication product of S, P, and T. Let us see a typical example of risk assessment. A synthetic process is changed with additional steps. They are 1. Additional 100 liters of toluene is used for dissolution of reactants. 2. Additional distillation to remove traces of toluene in the process. 3. Drying temperature of the tray dryer is increased by 10 degrees Celsius. 4. Milling conditions for final API are revised to have higher RPM to achieve smaller particle size distribution. For an established and approved process, the above changes are proposed. Let us see how each step is evaluated for risk. Let us see how the risk assessment is carried out. For the first point of additional 100 liters of toluene is used for dissolution of reactants. The first step is, is the reactor capable of containing the additional volume? Since there is additional quantity of toluene loaded into the reactor, it is necessary to check whether or not the volume of the reactor is capable to take up the load. Generally, anything more than 80% of the working volume of reactor is considered as beyond qualified range. So, this point takes more attention in risk assessment. Is the agitator capable of mixing the additional quantity? This is another point. It is necessary to check the capability of the agitator to mix the reactants thoroughly to achieve complete dissolution. Is the RPM revolutions per minute adequate for the agitator? This relates to the agitator motor capability. If necessary, high-powered motor may have to be used. Is the reactor qualified for operation at this volume? The design qualification approval report may be checked for this assessment. Are the utility services of heating and cooling adequate for processing reaction? This assessment is also important. The supporting utilities should be capable of achieving this requirement. If necessary, these utilities may have to be requalified to address the new process requirements. The second step, additional distillation to remove the traces of toluene in the process. The potential risk identification items may include is the mass temperature increasing during additional distillation? If the mass temperature increases, there is a potential for charring of the reaction mass. This may lead to generation of additional degradants. Is there any possibility of change in texture or color of the mass? There may be possibility of changes in these important aspects. Is the reaction mass thickened after the additional distillation step? Is it difficult to transfer the reaction mass for next stage of operation? After additional distillation, if the reaction mass becomes too thick or slimy or as a semi-solid, it may be difficult to transfer for next stage of reaction. 
Is there a potential for increase in degradants beyond specification limits? The risk assessment should investigate into the possible increase in impurities or degradants in this stage. Let us see some more in this stage of drying temperature of tray dryer is increased by 10 degrees Celsius. Is the tray dryer qualified for handling the increased temperature? Is there any potential for increase in degradants or impurities? Is there any possibility for a change in appearance that is the description test of the product? Similar approach as described above should be taken here too. Because of increase in temperature, these attributes may change. Is there any potential for change in polymorphism, if any, of the product? Products with polymorphism may change into another form when exposed to higher temperatures. Let us see how we handle this fourth point. Milling conditions for final API are revised to have higher RPM to achieve smaller particle size distribution. Is there a potential to increase in temperature of the mill? Excessive temperature of the mill may change the attribute significantly. We discussed this aspect in a couple of slides previously. Is the dust extraction system in HVAC system capable to extract potential excessive dust generated? Is it necessary to replace the return air filters to contain the fine powder dust generated? These two points are related to the clean room air handling systems. The risk assessment should address these items for this proposed change. You must involve the engineering team also for evaluating these requirements. Also, additional qualifications and testing may also be necessary to establish the functioning of the HPSC systems. All these elements have to be included in the risk assessment with full understanding on severity, probability, and detectability of the risk. In addition to the chemistry related risk, it is necessary to check for any operational safety issues for the revised steps. Additional personal safety precautions may be included in the assessment. It is necessary to look into the potential revision to the related procedures, SOPs, systems, and other critical issues connected to the proposed process revision. All procedures affected by this change should also be reviewed and if necessary, revised as per the outcome of the risk assessment report. The risk assessment should include for checking the capability of utilities to handle the proposed process change requirements. Example, heating, cooling, distillation systems, etc. This point was discussed in the previous slides. Let us see a typical risk metric. The risk assessment table may be like this. This format is useful for capturing all the operations point-wise and based on the impact analysis, risk ranking can be done. If FME CA tool is used, you may have another column for S into P into T for establishing the risk classification with score. If the risk assessment confirms that there is no risk or very low risk or acceptable risk, a note of no mitigation plan assigned for this operational step may be written in the mitigation plan. Separate matrixing may be done for each stage of operation. Let us see other important points to look into. FMEA or FMECA tool is very useful for evaluation of process change. 
ICHQ9 refers to these useful tools for risk assessment. The intent of each tool is described well in the guideline. PHA or HAZOP are very useful for assessing the operation related issues. These two tools are good for evaluating the risk involved in personal safety and other hazards involved in the process change. Supporting statistical tools are very useful for evaluating the risk statistically. Supporting statistical tools including control charts, design of experiments, histograms, Pareto charts, process capability analysis charts, etc. are very useful. I hope that this simple example is useful for you to carry out risk assessment. In coming up videos, we will learn more on different types of changes where vendor change is done or changes in specifications or test methods or changes in critical equipment or changes in manufacturing location. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.